What's up, everyone? It is Brent, and welcome to the very first Work in Progress After Dark podcast coming at you every Thursday, 11.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I'm not in California anymore. 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we talk about um, whatever I feel like talking about, mostly video games, anime, manga, TV, entertainment, things like that. Today, we're going to do, for my first podcast, I'm going to do my very first tier list. We are going to do a Persona 5 slash Persona 5 Royal character tier list. And so we're going to go ahead and hop right into it. All right. Now, how we're going to do this. I have these all lined up in a specific order. Um, they're not based off any kind of preference or things like that. I just kind of went with confidants bosses, and then the Phantom Thieves in general. And so uh, how we're going to do this is, or how I plan on doing this, is it's going to be based uh, off of a few different criteria. It's going to be based off of, you know, personal preference, the overall story of that character, and also what that character's confidant provides the Phantom Thieves in general. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with it. We've got Igor, okay? Igor is, you know, he's he's Igor. Um, he guides you through the game. Uh, I can't... He, he basically allows you to carry more personas. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to put him at C tier. We're going to put him at C tier. He, he allows... He brings up your personas. He allows you to carry more personas with you. Um and and he he's he's got an interest oh by the way there are spoilers in this in this podcast so um i will be discussing um the plot of the the game and the um characters within the game um so yeah igor uh he's got an interesting story he's a bad guy he's a good guy and a bad guy he's real um he's, there's a real igor there's a fake igor and uh but yeah he, we're nevertheless He's helping you throughout the game, allowing you to do different things within the Velvet Room. But we're going to put him at a C just simply because he the he the the game automatically gives you all of this stuff. The next next we're going to have the twins, and I'm going to just go ahead and couple the twins up with Lavenza, um, seeing how they are simply uh, the same character. <laughs> hey, what's up, gamer critic? Um, thanks for stopping by. Um, so, uh, the twins, the twins, there, um, there really isn't much to their particular story. Uh, I mean, they, they start, you start warming up to them by completing the persona requests that they have. Essentially what you have to do is you have to combine certain personas with certain skills and it appeases them. And what they unlock throughout your time in the game is it allows you to, um, essentially create stronger personas. By the end of it, you'll be able to create personas of any level. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put them, I'm going to put them at B tier and put them at B tier. So I'm just going to do all that um, just simply because, yeah, they, they allow you to create personas of any level. Uh, and by the end of the game, you kind of want that. You want to be creating personas that are super high level in order to beat uh the bosses towards the end of the game the next is next is the fortune teller i can't remember her name uh just simply because honestly she was one of my lesser favorites of the confidants um and her her story wasn't really interesting she's kind of she's i don't know i didn't really she's not really nice to you she um she hates the fact that you're like basically frauding her um proving her fraud um uh and i didn't i never used any of her any of her like abilities the only time the only reason why i ever used her was when i was going for the platinum within the platinum you have to complete all um you have to complete all uh mementos requests so i'm gonna go ahead she's gonna be our first f tier she didn't really do much for me uh next is the tower confidant i can't remember his name either uh, you rank up your guns, more gun abilities. Once again, an, another uh, another per another confidant that just in that just kind of flew under my radar. Um, 
he and, and I can't remember his story all too much just because I just didn't find it all that interesting. Um, his gun stuff does help out later in the game because you eventually, as you level level him up, you're allowed to uh, you're basically the gun your gun will um, go will hit anything even if that particular shadow or persona is immune to gunfire. So like that's okay, but um, just simply because like I you know. I, you know, if you use guns, that's great. I don't always, I don't, I didn't always particularly use guns. I only used guns when it was necessary, but it wasn't always something that I really focused on. I'm going to put him a D tier. Okay. Um, Yoshida, uh, I think that's his name. Uh, he actually, his confidant story is actually really interesting. He's a failed politician who did some shady stuff. Um, and basically, as as you progress through his confidant story, he regrets his actions. But his his particular um, how he ranks up is really cool, simply because he um, towards the end of the confidant rank, the confidant stuff, he how do I put it? <laughs> He allows you to communicate and try, uh, try repeat tries to negotiate with personas if you're trying to get them in your party, which can be a very handy skill if you're if you're not always particularly good at reading the emotion of the of the personas. So his level up skill is very, um, it's it, it's like it it can be critical. So we're gonna go ahead and put him. We're gonna put him at C tier. Um, it was once again, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, it's great. The, the the reason why I put him at C tier is because another reason is because he he's only available on certain days, especially in Royal. Royal, they change up how his pattern works, and he's only available on certain days. So if you miss him, it can be difficult to to gain him back up. Um, you got the the reporter here, um, and I can't remember specifically what she offers simply because her um her stuff is I, I, you know I, I can't remember let me see what does she offer oh okay so she offers basically uh your secure your security level will not increase and will drop to zero overnight okay so um that is that it, that can be helpful if you're bad at like sneaking and if you're constantly ranking up your um, if you're constantly getting in trouble within the the palaces. So it can be helpful if you're transitioning. Um, and so yeah, let's um she can be she can be a little difficult to rank. I think I'm also gonna put her at D tier. Um, because like she was probably one of the more uninteresting confidants. Uh, gosh, what was her name? What is this girl's name? I forgot what her name is, but we like her because she's cute. Um, Hifumi, okay. Um, so she actually is really, really helpful. She is incredibly helpful. Her confidant, um, her her as you rank up her confidant, she. Her, her her skill sorry i'm getting all mixed up here as you rank her up her story is really interesting she's she's this girl who's trying to break free from her mother's expectations um and uh she just kind of wants to be herself and play this play this um game on her own terms and do what she whatever she wants not not whatever she wants but she wants to do what she wants with her life but her abilities are basically um you can swap out your member, your party members in combat, which is a very, which is very helpful uh, in case you're uh, in a situation where you need a different like element or, or like just different, different uh, stuff on the field. So we're going to actually, she's going to be our first A. She's going to be our first A um, um, tier person. Iwa, 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 he, um, he his story is really interesting. I believe he was former yakuza. 
um, and he broke away from that to run the airsoft shop. And he's trying to do right by, I think, someone's son. He w That confidant rank was another one that I feel like I kind of glossed over a little bit. Um, and I was just kind of doing for the platinum. Also, his abil his what he offers you is something that I didn't always use. And I and I feel like I'm probably gonna use it more when I return to Royal because it allows you to upgrade your guns and add attachments to them. So as of right now, I feel like um I feel like uh, he should go a little lower, but I'm gonna put him at I'm gonna put him at C just simply because he's actually he's honestly just an interesting character. Um, now we're gonna start getting into some cool stuff here uh, because now we're getting into our more m some of my more like interesting characters. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna be rank high, but um, they 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 are definitely some of my they have really cool stories. So Kawakami, I'm going to go ahead and just put her straight in the S tier and I'm going to explain why. Um, Kawakami, uh, her, her story is really interesting. She's, she, she starts off as kind of like this, this, she, she's kind of like nasty to you just because she thinks that you're a delinquent. But as you progress through her story, you kind of realize the way, why she is the way she is. Um, and she's, you know, doing her, like her nighttime maid gigs just simply to make more money to appease these people who she feels guilty for killing their adopted son. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> she didn't do it. She didn't kill him directly, but she feels responsible for the death death of this child because she was tutoring him and he died like on his way to being tutored or something. But what she offers is great. And it is really cool, especially in new game plus. So ranking her up entirely, you get the... Um, you get like the special massage, right? So she'll come over and she'll give you a massage. And essentially, so how that works is say that you go into a palace. You go into a palace and you do all this stuff. When you get out of a palace, you're tired and Morgana is going to tell you to go to sleep. Uh, but if Ka if you call Kawakami over, she'll give you a massage and now you can now you feel regenerate, re rejuvenated, and you can do more stuff in the evening. So it creates... It, cre it allows you to have that evening slot to do more things, whether it be to go talk to other confidants, rank up other confidants, or um, or rank up your stats like reading, uh, and, you know, intelligence, you know, things like that. So that is really that is really great. Um, Mishima, Mishima, I'm gonna put him now. Mishima is a great character, but he's obnoxious as hell. So I'm going to put him at A. I'm going to put him at A simply because his confidant, his what he offers is amazing, especially in New Game Plus. Okay? So, and he is, and honestly, when you play Persona 5, you should rank him, he should be one of the first people that you complete. Here's the reason why. By that time you get to the end, by the time you get to rank 10 with him, he is offering you all of these XP bonuses to you and to your party members. And when you get to rank 10, all of your party members, all of the party members who are not in your main party are still getting the same amount of XP as those who are in your party. So they're not leveling up slower than those who are in your party. So he's really critical um, throughout the game to get leveled up, especially New Game Plus. So the reason why I say New Game Plus, why it's really good is because if you have reached rank 10, if you reach rank 10, any confidants that you reach rank 10 with, basically at the end of the game, they give you like this memento and you hold on to it and it carries over into the next game. And what the memento provides, essentially what the me memento provides is their rank 10 ability. Uh, I mean, although the, so although in New Game Plus, they're back down to zero, it's as if they are rank 10 and you still get the perks of having that character at rank 10 if that makes sense uh uh so the doctor talk ta takami talk uh, okay um takami uh, how do you say her name excuse me um <laughs> where is she at here uh there she is 
Oh, yeah, Takami. Takami? Takami. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, she is... Her, her confidant story is really cool. Uh, she's just kind of like this doctor who's creating all these weird medicines. She used to be a legitimate doctor, but because she does all this weird stuff, she was ousted. Although she still has her own practice, people frown upon her because she's always practicing these different medicines. And people are accusing her of killing this girl, even though the girl isn't really dead. Uh, but what what she provides is access to her med stocks. Um, and, you know, I didn't use her that much, but I see the benefit of her. Uh, I don't remember what carries. Let's see what carries over into the next game. Increased selection of revival items from the clinic. Okay. So, like, you 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 essentially get that from you essentially get that in your in your new game plus but you, you know like i she some her perks weren't something that i always that i that i didn't always use um so i'm going to put her um because i see the benefit of her character i'm going to put her a b i'm going to put her a b um Okay, Sai Nijima. All right. Um, okay, so Sai is, Sai is one of those confidants that ranks up with you as you progress through the game. It, everything is automatic. Let me just kind of remember what she provides. I just need a reminder. Pardon me here. Where is she at? Um, I can't remember... You know, I don't even know if it's if it's if she's even listed in here because she's one that um, just um, doesn't level up. But anyway, um, she automatically levels up. Uh, she's she's completely against the Phantom Thieves throughout the entire game. Um, and she's she's kind of she's just your thorn in her. She's just this thorn in your side. But when she finally comes to your side, she's one of your biggest supporters. Um uh, but I can't remember what is she provides. Let me see here. Okay, let me see what we have here. What does she provide? Um, what does she provide? So, um, no. she doesn't provide anything. It's just like, it's just story stuff. Um, you unlock the ultimate persona of Satan for judgment. Um, so, uh, with that being said, I like based off some of the criteria that, um, uh, I've put forth on to how I am kind of ranking these people. I'm going to put her, um, I'm going to put her as, uh, C. I, I don't just simply because she's an interesting character, I don't think she should go below that, but she doesn't really offer much in the way of benefits to the Phantom Thieves in general. Um, okay, Papa Sojiro. Papa Sojiro, he just gets S rank. Like, I, I feel like I don't need to offer any kind of explanation. Papa, Papa Sojiro is, he's, um, he's, uh, <laughs> um, um, yeah. Basically, like he becomes one of your biggest supporters. He believes in you, um, and as you rank him up, you get you can like make coffee in the shop, and the coffee's really great because you know it restores your SP. Um, I didn't use it that often, but like I see the benefit of it, and he just gets S rank simply because uh, Papa so Papa Sojiro is awesome. All right, Doctor Maruki. Okay, here we go. We're getting into. Persona 5 Royal Territory. So Dr. Dr. Maruki is a new character added to Persona 5 Royal. And uh, I was having a hard time kind of placing him, finding out, figuring out where I wanted to place him in this stuff and where I, when I wanted to decide to actually put him on the list simply because he's actually a very, he's a very critical character to Persona 5. Sorry, my cats. He's a very critical character to in Persona 5 Royal. <clears throat> So he is essentially the main antagonist of the royal part of Persona 5. Um, essentially, he's trying to create a world 
where um, everyone lives happy and he's trying to use the um, he's trying to use mementos to do that and the palaces to do that. Essentially, his idea his ideal world is where everyone, he, although everyone is essentially being controlled, they are unaware of it, but they're and they're always happy. So. Um, the moral dilemma of Persona 5 Royal is would you, do you want to live your own life but encounter all of like struggle and hardship or do you want to live a life of carefreeness and be unaware uh, and be unaware that you're being controlled even though you're living a life of happiness and <clears throat> excuse me he his i i understand and i feel the pain that he's going through and i get his motives although they are just totally warped and messed up um i understand and he 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 was really he's a really great character i like his character his boss fight was emotional the music behind it was epic and it's just like this hour long epic boss fight between multiple stages and it boils down, like I said, this is a spoiler thing. It boils down to just you and him just punching it out at the very end. And you're just trying to knock sense into each other. And it's, it, and it's really emotional. And I just remember completing it. I, I think I beat it at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night. And I was just like, I was messed up. Like it was like, it, it like it shook me to my core. And simply for that, I'm going to put him in S rank. Uh, Doctor and Doctor Maruki is great. Also, uh, hopefully Billy Kamitz, who voices him, gets over his stage four colon cancer. Uh, I was really bummed out when I heard that because uh, Billy Kamitz is um, is a great uh, dub actor. And um, yeah, Doctor Maruki S rank. All right. Now we're getting into the bosses. We're getting into the bosses, and how I'm going to judge these bosses is. Um, how interesting they are, uh, their, their palaces, okay, and their overall boss fight. Okay, um, Kamoshida. Um, uh, Kamo Kamoshida is, he's, he's the intro boss, right? His palace is the intro palace. You got to trudge through it in order to get out of those... Um, to get out of those uh, tutorials and if you've beaten so i've beaten persona 5 a total of four times i've beaten persona 5 vanilla three times gotten the platinum for that and i've beaten royal once uh and i got the platinum for that um man so getting through those first like 10 hours of the game to get into his to get through it's it's hard and it's kind of put a a stale uh, uh like this sort of like bad taste in my mouth but i gotta give him credit because kamashita um his villainy is what got me um into into the game and i was just like okay like this is what i it's like basically like this like this is it this is persona 5 this is what i'm about to get myself into you're about to encounter some messed up characters uh so i gotta give him credit for essentially hooking me into um into um yeah so we're gonna put him at b rank we're gonna put kamashita at b rank madarame um oh man uh so madarame's boss fight let, let's first of all let's talk about the let's first of all let's talk about the palace itself okay this palace kind of drove me nutty because you're you're kind of going through these different paintings and you have to kind of fill it figure the puzzle out and um uh he um this is going to be a weird one to gauge simply because like it does introduce uh yusuke and yusuke's um i really like yusuke yusuke really shined in like persona 5 strikers um he he was kind of annoying in persona in base persona 5 but like he in my opinion redeemed himself in strikers um so he's one of my favorite characters now um Madarame and his Madarame's boss fight can be frustrating if you don't know how to do it. Um, 
but like that's kind of a that's kind of the beauty of Persona 5 and just JRPGs in general. You got to figure out how the boss works. Uh, and uh, Madarame did have some pretty interesting mechanics, but um, the palace was overall for me. The palace was kind of a little bit frustrating. Um, so I'm gonna put him at C. Okay. Um, Kanashiro. Kanashiro, the bank is actually like arguably one of my arguably my favorite palace in the game, actually. Um uh outside of Futaba, and we'll 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 get to Futaba, but Kanashiro, there, there's something really cool about it, is the puzzles, the puzzles were really cool. Um and honestly, I think Kanashiro is actually a really interesting character. I, um, once again, he's kind of one of those characters that I somewhat understand where he's coming from, but his, his motivations are once again, super twisted and therefore, you know, and that's the whole reason why he's got, that's one of the reasons why he's got a palace, right? Because he's just kind of a, he's a twisted character. Um, and, uh, and then I think then his boss fight is a lot of fun um you know he gets on his the ball and he turns into a big old fly and he gets on a ball and it can run to roll towards you and um yeah he's but yeah uh simply simply his 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 palace is my favorite um so i'm putting him at a rank i'm gonna put him at a oh god what is his what is this guy's name everyone hates his palace so let's see um uh God, I for, why am I forgetting his name? I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Okumura. Okumura. That's right. All right, we got Okumura. So, Okumura. Now, let's talk Okumura. Let's talk Okumura. Uh, Okumura's palace, it's long, and you have to fight a lot of his henchmen within that palace. Um, his boss fight is also a little weird. Um, however, um, so here's the thing. I can understand people's complaints with Okumura. However, I had no issue with Okumura. Um, that is a very critical part of the story in Persona 5 because essentially his palace essentially marks the end of the second act of the game and it thrusts the phantom thieves into uh their their lowest po point in the game um it, it, so so in it so it's it's a weird place, um, and I feel like I'm gonna get I, you know I could potentially get a lot of hate for this because a lot of people really hate Okumura's Palace, and especially especially Okumura's Palace in Persona Five Royal because they decided to like make him even harder, uh, even more of a nightmare. Um, and it's timed; the boss fight is timed, and it's just like whatever. Uh, but I did not have a problem with Okumura's boss fight, none whatsoever. Uh, let's. How do we want to put this? Hmm. I'm gonna put him at B. I don't care. Hate me. I'm gonna put him at B. Okay. Okay. Masayo Shish um okay, we're um Masayo Shishido. Okay. I love the boss fight from Masayo Shishido. I hate the palace. I hate the palace. It's 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 my it's my least favorite palace in the game, besides Matarame's palace. It is it is a frustrating palace. You turn into mice. You got to deal with all these weird statues that turn you into mice and don't turn you into mice. And it's just and then it's a long palace. That okay, length palace length honestly doesn't bother me. I don't know why I threw that in there because it just spent it's just more time in Persona Five. Okay, so it's it, but like I'm like stuck. I'm stuck. Um, and, and you know the. So taking into the criteria of being a cool boss fight versus being a terrible, terrible palace, terrible palace. Honestly, it's it's a struggle. I don't think he deserves B. I, I like he he doesn't deserve A. I don't know if he deserves B. 
Um, it's kind of weird that A, B and C are kind of being matched. Um, I don't think that he deserves D though. So, okay. I guess that I got, okay. C. All right. We're going to put him at C. Um, okay. Uh, Yal the both. Okay. Yal the both. Let's, um, F honestly, it's, it's the final boss of the game. Honestly, he, 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 for me with Yal the both, it's just kind of like, okay, we got another God. Okay. We got another JRPG God. Uh, um, and you have to defeat him. So, uh, <laughs> Yalaboth is F. I could. He's, he's a husk for you to take over. You can give him. You can give him whatever personality you want to give him. Um, you can. You can have him date whatever whoever you want to date. Um, uh, yeah. Um, Joker, I'm gonna just put Joker. I'm gonna put Joker at A, just because it's Joker, right? It's just it's Joker. Okay, Morgana. Now we're now we're getting into the Phantom Thieves themselves, and uh, essentially this has to do with what they provide, uh, their care, their their stories throughout the game, their confidant ranks, etc. Okay, Morgana. What? Let's see. What did Morgana offer you again? Offer you again? Morgana is another one of those ones that just that just um, goes with that basically levels up with you uh throughout the game so let's see what did what did morgana provide you at the end of the game uh you get uh so um cure status elements whatever so morgana uh is is interesting too there's a point in the game where morgana morgana is just sort of he's sort of like he's all bummed out because he feels useless and it's really interesting. He comes at a point in the game where he essentially is useless. Okay. He's, he's like wind, uh, wind is his specialty. And, and then, you know, he's got some physical attacks. You got the, he's got the punch, which can be, which can land a critical, which can be really important, but he's not a good healer. Eventually you get Makoto. Makoto's a better healer than Morgana. Um, and Morgana he 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 just eventually kind of becomes like useless but like at the same time it's morgana right morgana's great um morgana's cool but like um as like a phantom thief in general there comes a point where you just won't use him anymore he's gonna go morgana's going into the d rank just simply because um he's just no longer useful he becomes whiny towards the end of the game now he does redeem himself in strikers morgana is an awesome party mate in strikers but I'm going to go ahead and just put him... Yeah, you know what? He's going to go in C. We're going to put him in C. I think he deserves C. I don't think he deserves D. We're going to put him on C. Um, Anne, okay? Anne, um, she's like your your cute girl next door character um, who's got a dark past. Um, she, she wants nothing... She wants to be more than how people perceive her. Um, and she, she just people preserve her to be kind of like, you know, like, I don't know how to put it without, I don't want to say like bad words too much. Um, but she, she's not who you think she is. Um, and her, her confidant rank, what does she provide again? Um, just double check here. Um, here status ailments. Um, yeah, and, and, and you know, but her, so basically, like she she doesn't offer too much in the way of anything besides and really about besides an interesting, uh, besides an interesting character arc, um, and um, I'm gonna put her at I'm gonna put her at C. I'm gonna put Anne at C. Um, Ryuji, okay, Ryuji is where things get cool. All right. There's going to come a point in the game where fighting enemies in um, fighting enemies in mementos gets annoying as hell. OK, uh, Ryuji prevents that. Let me double check. I do believe it's Ryuji. So there's going to come. Um, let me double. He. Uh, OK, chance. To, OK, so, yeah. 
when you're in when you're in mementos and you do a sneak attack on an enemy in mementos it has a chance to automatically win if you rank um ryuji up to i believe rank six and they're coming and it's like so you're just trying to get their mementos you're trying to do your stuff you don't want to run into a bunch of enemies just just sneak attack on an enemy and you have a chance of winning and if you're over leveled if you're over leveled you're you're essentially a guaranteed win and with that i honestly believe that he deserves a he deserves a tier uh because that's incredibly useful um uh, he's 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 it's incredibly useful now yusuke i talked about yusuke earlier um and he he redeemed himself in strikers he redeemed himself in strikers big time but uh his confidant story it's interesting but the rewards i never used the cards i didn't fully understand how the cards worked um so i didn't use it that much uh but like he in combat he hits like a freaking train he hits uh he hits hard with his physical attacks he's really good against the reaper you want to have him in your party when you're when you're fighting the reaper um so he he hits like a truck um yeah he's he's kind of your primary physical at, he and he and Ryuji become your kind of primary physical people, uh, but I don't know. He he hits. Oh, he's gonna. He's B. He is B. Um, okay, Makoto. All right, Gamer Critic. Are you still with me? Um, Makoto. Uh, um, I am not on Team Makoto. I think her her confidant story is. I I didn't really find it all that interesting. Um, she doesn't provide you let me double check to see what she provides um you know she you know ailments uh chance to withstand um prevents yeah it's just like chance to a chance to step in after shadow negotiation fails allowing to retry just kind of some of the typical um comp typical uh phantom thief uh benefits um and, and then, like, on top of that, everyone on Reddit and the whole Persona 5 community seems to think that she's best girl. I I am, like, like she's whatever to me. Um, so she's going, she's, but but she she's really great in combat. She's a great healer. She's got her nuclear ability. Um, she's great in combat. Uh, she is going to go in C rank. Okay. Futaba. All right, we're gonna so Futaba. Um, uh, her let's let's talk about what she provides. So she can scan enemies for weaknesses. Um, she can attach buffs to your to your party automatically. So that's incredibly useful. So if you rank her up entirely, uh, she buffs you. She scans enemies' weaknesses. She she'll scan floors and mementos. Um, she she's she's got really great confidant perks um i really like her her character arc uh i i so i really like her character arc i think um how she kind of breaks out of this sort of sh mental shell that she's confined her in confined herself in her entire life uh it was it, it was really interesting and then you know on top of that you know her dynamic with sojiro was adorable uh she, and and honestly her character and Sojiro's character, they're very critical just to the world building of Persona 5. Um, Futaba's mother was working on stuff that had to do with the palaces and um, uh, I forgot what they called it. Uh, but, and then and then I also really liked Futaba's palace. Futaba's palace was great. I love the level design. I love the theme. I love the puzzles. Futaba gets S rank. Futaba gets S rank. Okay, hate me. Futaba gets S rank. Uh, Haru, Haru is Haru is just adorable. You know, I can understand why people are frustrated. Um, Haru does not get enough attention in the game. Um, 
Um, and I feel like she deserved more attention. I think um, I, she doesn't really offer anything of that much use, uh, but her psychic her psychic damage hits. She she's also very very powerful in strikers. Her physical attacks um, just they hit hard. Her psychic damage hits really hard. Uh, super great in strikers. Um, she's gonna get she's gonna get a B rank. She's going to get a B rank, okay? Now down to the last characters of the tier list. We've got Akechi and we've got Kasumi. Um, Akechi, in, Akechi was already interesting enough in Persona 5 Vanilla. But Persona 5 Royal redeems him. Any negative qualities that you might have seen in Akechi in Persona 5 Vanilla, it's just redeemed in Royal across the board, just across the board. Um, he's, he, you finally get a, you get not, you not only get his story, his original story beats in Persona 5 Vanilla, uh, uh, from Persona 5 Vanilla, but in Royal, you actually get a true confidant ranking system. Um, and you get to see his character arc and you get to see him. Like there's just this point in, I think rank nine where, he just flat out tells the Joker, I hate you and I want to beat you. But like you like you get it. Like they're they're natural, they're natural opposites. And then of course, you know, in the royal part of royal, like he he takes control of his life. He he although he's he is dead, he is dead in, in the world before what Maruki do, uh Dr. Maruki does. Um, you know. Dr. Maruki brings him back, um, but but Akechi is completely self-aware as to what's going on, and he's like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm tired of people controlling me. I'm going to help you take Dr. Maruki down, even if I know, even if I know that it's going to kill me. And honest, so he his stuff in Royal is really great. I will say that as a party member, um, his, especially in the Royal stuff, it's not all that great. Um, but I kept him in my party for the entire time in Royal just because I wanted to have more Akechi. Um, so Akechi, Akechi's S. Akechi's S rank. He's great. Akechi's S rank. Um, now we're down to Kasumi Yoshizawa, okay? The centerpiece, the, the, um, the, the poster girl for Persona 5 Royal. Um, now, her, her character is really interesting. She wants to be... She wants to be the best gymnast gymnast at the school. Um, she she and she's got all of these um, all these great aspirations. Now, once again, this is a spoiler podcast. We're talking Persona Five Royal spoilers. Okay, Kasumi ain't her real name. Okay, Kasumi is Kasumi is the name of her sister who died in a tragic accident. Her real name is Samire. Uh, Samir Samire. Um, and what happens is Dr. Maruki brainwashes her into believing that she's Kasumi because Kasumi was a better gymnast. Um, and so Dr. Maruki brainwashes her into thinking that she's um, is Kasu is Samire. And the whole idea of the royal stuff is Joker helping her break free from from this brainwashing, so that way she can kind of take control of her own life again and not be controlled. Even though her life was optimal as Kasumi, she doesn't want to be controlled by Maruki anymore. Now, here's the thing: the disappointing, the disappointing stuff about Kasumi is her her integration in Persona Five Royal was actually pretty seamless. It seemed really great. But the downside is that you don't get to play with her that much. She she hop, she's she will she hops in a couple times uh, in some of the stuff during Side Nijima's Palace, um, and she, she hops in here and there, but you don't really use her that much until the royal stuff. And just like a catchy, her her like the way the 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 kind of stuff that her persona provides, it isn't like it isn't optimal. And honestly, like she was just in my party just to have just because like this is you know this is royal. Like you, you the only opportunity to play with Kasumi is during the last you know last twenty hours of the royal content. And so. Essentially, I had to I, I had to carry her uh, just because her her combat abilities aren't particularly good. Um, 
and, and like it's just not particularly useful in um that the final palace but she's an interesting character enough uh i like her she's best girl of persona 5 royal uh i'm gonna go ahead and put her at a um so that completes my list that completes my this is actually my like i said at the beginning of this stream this is my first ever uh tier list i had this was actually a lot of fun i got to talk about persona 5 a game that is honestly one of my favorites i don't know if you can see it back there but i have a um I have a, let's see, how do I do this? Um, um, I have back there, if you can see it, I have a Persona 5 shrine of all this really great Persona stuff. So, um, so it's, it's, it's arguably one of my favorite games ever made. So I had a lot of fun, uh, making this tier list. And if you have any, like, if you have any, um, so if you have any qualms with my tier list, I want to hear what your thoughts are. I want to hear like where we, where you would rather put some other people or if you agree, please leave me a comment and let me know some of your takes, whether it be on my tier list or what, where you might put someone on your tier list. Um, I'd love to have the discussion go further. Um, in the meantime, whoever tuned into this stream, this is my first ever live stream, my first ever live after dark podcast. It's going to be every Thursday at uh, uh, 11.30 Eastern Standard Time. I will occasionally stream on YouTube now. I'm looking forward to it. I, you know, this this was a lot of fun. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And we're gonna go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, and if you enjoyed this, um, if you enjoyed this show, please consider liking and subscribing um, for more um, After Dark podcasts. Uh, it would mean a lot. And it helps out a lot. So thank you very much for tuning in. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace.